everyone, Jeremy Blum here with another episode of Tech Bits. This week's episode is going to be about overclocking. This is a request made by probably a few dozen YouTube and UltimateComputers.net users. This is a very popular topic. This is not going to be a tutorial, however. This is going to be a basic guide to what overclocking is, how you can make sure your system is ready to be overclocked, gauging your overclock, and I will go into some specifics on how you can go about overclocking your CPU or your video card. I can't offer an exact tutorial because all systems are different and it wouldn't help very many people. So this is going to be kind of like a broad overview. It should help you get started. This is going to be a two-part video. The first part of this video will be talking about what overclocking is, make sure you have the right hardware to do an overclock, different types of overclocking, how you can test your overclock for stability, gauge the performance, and a few things to look out for when it, when it comes to overclocking. second video will be more specifically about how you can overclock your AMD or Intel CPU, and your ATI or NVIDIA video card. Um, so let's get into overclocking. What is overclocking? Overclocking is basically running any part of your computer at a higher speed than what it was originally intended to be run at. There's a number of reasons you might want to do this. It increases performance in games, applications, increases, uh, decreases load times for your computer, and it can help to extend the life of a slightly older system, squeeze a little bit more juice out of it. The way you do an overclock is accomplished by changing several settings in the system. Uh, These include, include voltages, bus speeds, multipliers, dividers, timings, and more. And one thing you're going to want to keep in mind with overclocking is that it's not a perfect science. Different computers are going to overclock differently. Even if you have a computer that's identical to someone else's, chances are it's not going to overclock exactly the same because of minute differences in how the CPU is manufactured and things like that. You should also keep in mind that you're not going to be perfect at overclocking overnight. It takes a lot of practice and guess and check work and uh, just experience to be able to get good with overclocking and kind of get an intuition for uh, how speeds work and how you can get your overclock to be most stable. So just get out there and experiment with it. That's the best way to learn. So before you actually go ahead and start overclocking, you're going to want to make sure that you have the right hardware for the job. First off, if you're overclocking your CPU, you're going to want to make sure you have a very overclockable CPU. You basically find this out by just Googling the CPU, looking on forums, see what other people have been able to achieve with it. You'll be able to tell an overclockable CPU immediately because there'll be news about it, people will be raving about how high they can get on it. And uh, based on how high you want to go, just look for other people who have been able to achieve those speeds to see if you'll probably be able to. Like I said, it's not always going to be exactly the same, but you can generally get a pretty good idea. The AMD Black Edition CPUs are generally very good overclockers and the Intel Core 2 Quad series are also very good overclockers. Next thing you're going to want to make sure of is that if you're overclocking a lot of components in your system that you don't end up with a bottleneck. It's very common for the video card to be a bottleneck in the system, so for example if, if you're worried about your video card being a bottleneck and you're going to overclock your CPU a lot, you're going to want to make sure you have a high-end video card and you'll probably need to overclock the video card as well to avoid that potential bottleneck. Bottleneck doesn't have to be in the video card, it can also be in the memory or the CPU, or any other component in the system, really. A hard drive is also a bottleneck, but that's not really what we're focusing on when it comes to overclocking. One of the most important things, not just overclocking, but building a computer in general, is having a stable power supply. Because we're going to be messing with voltages when you're overclocking, and you want to make sure that the system is very stable all the time, you want to make sure you have stable power going to the components. So you're going to achieve this by making sure you get a name brand power supply, good ratings, and something that will take good care of your computer basically and provide it the clean power that it deserves to be overclocked. And then the last thing is cooling. When you're overclocking, temperatures are going to increase from your normal temperatures. As a result of this, you might want to consider getting an aftermarket cooler, water cooling, something like that. Uh, you can generally overclock quite a bit on, on stock coolers now, but you might want to consider going aftermarket if you really want to keep those temperatures down as you overclock. Alright, there's two basic types of overclocking. First off is a BIOS or a hardware overclock. This basically means that the overclocking settings get loaded uh, right when the computer boots. They don't have anything to do with the operating system or anything like that. They're stored right into the BIOS. You generally use this for your CPU and uh, your motherboard settings. There's also something called software overclocks. Software overclocks are more commonly used for video cards um, because with a video card, if you apply your overclock settings directly to the video card BIOS. The video card is a BIOS separately from the system BIOS. Uh, and that overclock is not stable. Your video card might stop functioning and you won't be able to reset it because you won't be able to see anything on your screen. 
and that obviously is not good. So I'll talk about this a little bit in the second episode, but there's several software options that you can consider when it comes to overclocking video cards. And you can use software to overclock your CPU as well, uh, just so it gets applied when you're uh, in the operating system, or you can have it set to get applied when you're running a certain application, something like that. All right, so let's say you've, go, you've gone ahead and done your overclock, and you, you want to you gauge it. This is, there's a, a couple important things that you need to do through the process of overclocking to make sure your system's going to be stable and to uh, check what your performance level is at. First thing you're going to want to keep tabs on is your temperatures. You should check your temperatures running on both idle and load before you start your overclock and then write these down. Uh, when it comes to overclocking, I suggest writing everything down as you go so you can keep track of what's going on. Um, particularly when you increase the voltage uh, on your CPU or your memory or anything like that, temperatures are going to go up. Temperatures generally increase with the square of the voltage or linearly with the frequency increases that you apply. So as a result of this, you're going to need to compensate by considering aftermarket cooling um, and you're going to want to monitor these temperatures very closely as you overclock. Uh, as I'll talk about in the second, uh, second part of this video, you generally do overclocks in very small increments and at, at each increment you should be checking your temperatures on idle and at load. Uh, I generally suggest that you, you, don't, you don't allow your temperatures to go over 65 on a CPU or 85 on load on a video card, but generally try to keep it as low as possible. The other thing that you need to keep a lookout for in addition to temperatures is uh, the actual performance level of your system and how stable it is. I use a program personally called uh, Prime95 to stress test my CPU, and you might want to use something like a folding client or an intensive video game or 3D Mark Vantage or 3D Mark 06 to test your uh, video card and your CPU together. Basically, as you do each increment on your overclock, I suggest you run a program like Prime95 to max out your CPU for at least 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, if your system doesn't crash in this time, then your overclock is stable and you're good to go. And you can also use this to keep your CPU or whatever at load uh, so you can monitor what the temperatures are when you're using it at load. That means that all the cores are at 100% utilization. Um, benchmarking. This is not so much about testing for the stability of your system, but rather seeing what kind of impact your overclock has had. Uh, I suggest you start by taking a benchmark on stock settings, just like everything else. Always run everything on stock settings first, and then also do it as you overclock. You might want to use a tool like 3D Mark to measure your CPU and GPU rating so you can watch it rise as you overclock. Another thing that's particularly good that I like with, about a 3D Mark is it gives you different scores for your CPU and video card. So as you're overclocking your CPU and maybe not changing your video card speed, you might see your video card score actually drop as your CPU speed drops. That means your video card is bottlenecking your system and you need to think about maybe uh, either overclocking your video card or maybe clocking your CPU down a little bit to compensate for the fact that your video card maybe can't handle as high as you're going. You should pay attention to the specific scores here and like I said with everything else, um, write them down as you go so you, you get an idea of what you're achieving with different levels of overclocks. So basically, yeah, write down everything. As I'm personally overclocking, I keep out a notebook and I write for every frequency change, voltage change, anything like that. Uh, I'll run 3D Mark, I'll see what kind of scores I get, I'll write down what temperatures I'm getting. This is really good, especially if you want to look back later and you decide maybe uh, down the road your overclock isn't as stable as you would like it to be, you want to revert to a, another setting you knew that worked. This is good for that, so I really suggest writing stuff down as you go. Thanks for watching this episode of Tech Bits, and uh, I hope to see you on video number two. Thanks.